Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly format with a medieval theme where you, yes you on the toilet, my god you should definitely crack a window, that absolutely stinks, gets to choose what content I deliver to you each and every week. And this week we have Yehia Ashraf for their suggestion of video game villains that actually managed to kill their heroes. Now, this is the thing, video games and death actually have quite a complex relationship, because while you might be throwing Nathan Drake under the bus 30 or 40 times across his adventures, in the narrative he never dies. But what about those times where the villains actually get one over on the good guys? Well, that's where this list definitely comes in. But before I begin this sultry sun dance of sexual speaking, I don't know what I was doing with that one. Remember to say hi to me in the live chat over here and also drop your comments to next week's episode down in the comments section below. But until then, there's nothing else to do apart from me to clap my hands and get on with this list. Number 10, Mephiles, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that the last thing that anyone expected from a Sonic game is for Sonic to actually die. I mean, hell, Sega team had been trying to kill him off for years with all the sh** they were putting him in, he still wouldn't go down, but here, well, he bit the big one. In fact, he got a backstabbing that was so bad even Judas was like, oh damn. And that's thanks to Mephiles, who blinds Sonic and then impales the poor hedgehog from behind with an energy spear, killing him in one shot. Now this is shocking for two reasons, because A, you've just died, and number B, you're playing this trash heap? What are you doing to yourself? Sonic 06 is utter garbage. So yeah, Sonic's dead and we can all go home. Happy days, jobs are good of course he survived later on thanks to one of the most cringy moments ever put to disc, but you know what? That is a tale for another time. Number 9. Arnold Leach, Clive Barker's Jericho Now not much gets said about Clive Barker's Jericho, and that's actually a real shame because while this title was ropier than a rope trying to climb another rope, there was still some mad action to be found here, and for the most part, it was pretty fun. And the best thing about it is, is that it knew how to do death right. The game begins with the player controlling badass soldier Captain Devin Ross, who along with his comrades in the Jericho squad have been dispatched to deal with Arnold Leach, a crazed supernatural obsessive responsible for the deaths of countless innocent civilians. Now, even though this mission is labelled as an in and out affair, Uwe Vicar, things take a turn for the worse when Ross gets grabbed by Leech and, well, let's just say he gets his meat beaten harder than one of the thirsty comments for some of the female presenters here on What Culture. Yes, I see them. My God, guys, have a drink, you thirsty mutts. And after that, well, Leech drops you to your death. Talk about a pretty powerful opener, right? But don't worry, because Ross's spirit comes back for vengeance, but his body, um, well, if it was a car crash, this would definitely be a write-off. Number 8. The Wendigos Until Dawn Now, thanks to its narrative approach, Until Dawn puts you in the strange situation where every single playable character can actually die, and you can do so in many numerous and horrible ways. But most of these deaths come at the hand of the Wendigos, pale, goblin-like creatures who feast on human flesh, or as we might also know them as, Twitch streamers. Honestly, the juggling act of making sure every character is doing the right thing and at the same time having to keep these horrors away from you is so unbelievably challenging that it makes each and every death feel like a true mistake. Although I have to admit something, there is a kind of sick curiosity in just seeing how they will die, so yeah, a lot of my party members have died a lot. I might have problems. Number 7. Handsome Jack, Borderlands 2 Oh Jack, you are a weird entity, aren't you? Because on the one hand, Handsome Jack from Borderlands 2 is an utter shit heel. He is one of the worst characters ever imaginable and does some unspeakable things. But on the other hand, he's so relentlessly quotable and he's such a good villain that you find yourself gravitating towards his charismatic black hole. I love you, 
but I love to hate you even more. However, lest we not forget, this is also the man that killed Roland, a shocking moment in an otherwise pretty farcical storyline that got over how evil Jack was, not just by shooting a previous playable character in the back, but also it was an act that demonstrated his power and ruthlessness. You see, he could have done it to you, but he chose to make you watch. That's pretty evil. And the thing is, I know that Roland wasn't a playable character in Borderlands 2, but seeing as he had such an impact on the first game, and obviously his legacy carries through into Borderlands 3 as well, I feel like it deserves to make the list. Cut me some slack. I've not got much else going on in my life. Number 6. Makarov. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So the Call of Duty games have got a pretty weird relationship with death. Now in the multiplayer, it's all about chaos, kills, and basically being a but in the single player, well, what they try to do is get over the real importance of death, the meaning and power of killing off a character while at the same time throwing waves of enemies at you. It's a balancing act, but for the mo- I'll rewind that. But for the most part, they pull it off. I mean, the likes of Paul Jackson and Soap are pretty high up there as emotional moments, but for me, it has to be Yuri's death that stands out, mostly because it's actually Makarov who does the dirty to you. And Makarov, if you didn't know, is the most detestable seat-sniffing little prick in any of the COD games. You go out as a hero, saving Price in the process, but being gunned down for your efforts. At least, however, there is a small moment of saving grace, and that is you get to see Makarov die as well. Number 5. Edgar Ross, Red Dead Redemption Oh god. Ten years on, and Red Dead Redemption's ending still is one of the most emotional, moving, and meaningful moments in gaming that I have yet to experience. After spending dozens and dozens of hours controlling protagonist John Marston, to watch him get gunned down by Edgar Ross and his cronies felt like losing a close personal friend. Albeit a friend who probably stank to high heaven, having been adventuring for weeks without a single sniff of a bath. It was meant to be the culmination of his arc. It was meant to be that he had achieved this moment of peace, but then along came Ross and turned you into Swiss cheese. And you know what? The reason why I love and hate this moment is because for a split second, you believe that you can do this. You can take down all of these bad guys, but you can't. And the worst thing is, is that when you die from, let's just say, extreme bodily ventilation, Edgar Ross's smug smile is the last thing you see. What a cut. But you know what? He's not actually the only Red Dead rotter on this list because, drum roll please. Number four, Mika. F him. <laughs> Number four, Mika Bell, Red Dead Redemption 2. Right, so Mika is one of the most detestable Red Dead characters ever, and it is easy to see why, because he's about as aggy as a Newcastle raggy after three cowies, nice bit of northern slang for you there. American audience, if you understood any of what I said, type it down in the comment section below, because I'd love to hear it. And he's a backstabbing little runt who does some pretty horrible things before the ending of Red Dead Redemption 2. But this is now turning into what is some sort of a, a customary thing. I'm I aware that people don't want Red Dead Redemption 2 spores, what I'm going to do is provide you with a piece of poetry that I've written about Mika so that you can choose whether to stay or go. Hopefully my poetry will be so good that you'll want to stay anyway. So uh, I'm going to read it off my script that I've got here. So, <clears throat> an ode to Mika. Oh Mika, how I hate you so, and across our time my hate did grow. For you were such a despicable oh, yeah. chode that I felt the need to unload my six shooters into that disgusting face, spill your brains all over the place. Because when there was trouble, you always seemed to dash, probably to cultivate that bloody pedo tash. I thought we were partners, I figured we were friends, but you, Mika Bell, became Mika the Bell End. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, imaginary crowd, we're not here. There's literally just a radiator over there. That's my only company, and a light bulb. All right, mate. Thanks for making him look so shiny. Anyway, yes, yeah, so in short, he stabs you in the back or he shoots you in the face, depending on your honor rating towards the end of the game. And to be fair, both of these are reprehensible, reprehensible actions, but they are only the tip of the iceberg compared to what else he does to you in this game. He is a stupid, worthless piece of horse and I hope that he gets eaten alive by dogs.
Number 3. Emperor Palpatine – Star Wars The Force Unleashed So while Emperor Palpatine was pretty useless against Luke and Rey and their respective Star Wars stories, he is still a threat in close combat. I mean, Mace Windu and definitely Starkiller can attest to this. But then again, it was mainly pride and the fact that their bloody mentor got in the way that led to their respective deaths. And if I'm being brutally honest, Palpatine's only got one real tactic, and that is, Oh, I'm so weak, I'm so weak, my turkey neck is all so flabby, Ugh, psych bitches! Force lightning, when he's trapped into a corner. Oh, what a tactical mastermind. It's this lightning blast that knocks Kota aside, forcing Starkiller to take the full brunt of things and dying in a rather underwhelming way. Now, obviously, there is another ending in which Starkiller lives, but the light side is meant to be this game's canon, which didn't matter anyway because Unleashed 2 brought him all back and, do you know what, I just get bored thinking about it. And he dies in that one as well, so yeah, good going, mate. Two for two. Fucking brilliant. Number two, Ramsay Bolton! Telltale's Game of Thrones. It's actually genuinely surprising when you think about it that this is the first actual medieval themed game to go onto this supposedly medieval themed show. I mean, to better explain why we did this, I'm meant to have, have you guys ever seen Limmy before? Limmy the Comedian? He's absolutely brilliant. He's got this uh, adventure quest skit, which I'm hoping that Osley will put up for you now. Just a little, little wee bit, little wee bit there. You're awake in a castle tower. It is a window. I want to dress up like him going forward. But obviously then this all happened, and now I've got to do this, and I don't have access to a green screen. Sorry to involve you in my personal dramas, but here we go. Anyway, Ramsay Bolton doesn't actually need introduction at this point, and I recently described him on These Things Suck, which you should definitely watch as well, that being in a room with him is basically akin to sticking your balls into a beehive and hoping for the best, as it is a bad move indeed. And you know what, I totally stick by this statement because, I mean, take a look at what he does to Ethan in this game. You've been playing as Ethan for some time now, but as all Game of Thrones fans will tell you, never get attached to anyone as they will always, always die. And it does, indeed, with Ethan being stabbed in the neck by Mr. Bolton, and it's just awful because he's a kid. It's, he's my boy, my wee baby boy, and now he's bleeding out on the carpet. He's bleeding out, man! Someone to save my boy! My stupid boy! <laughs> Whatever. It was utterly shocking, though, is what I'm trying to say. And you know what? The series never got a proper conclusion, so we'll never know that there was even a slight bit of retribution for this act, which makes it even worse. And number one, Sephiroth slash Genova, Final Fantasy VII. So thanks to the remake being on everyone's minds at the moment, what better time than now than to detail one of the most shocking, brutal, and heartbreaking deaths in all of gaming, that being of sweet, bubbly, and chipper Aerith, or Aeris if you want to get anal about it, in Final Fantasy VII. Yes, midway through Square Enix's classic 1997 RPG, Sephiroth descends like a goth prick from the rafter and plunges his compensation sword into her back. And yes, while this is technically Genova in disguise, Sephiroth gets the credit for this kill. But it doesn't matter who you blame for this kill. All that matters is she's dead. She's as dead as my parents' belief that I will ever amount to something someday. But the thing is, it was utterly heartbreaking. As a kid, I was just there like, what? My characters don't die in games. This is an unheard of thing. So for it to happen now, it's like, nah, nah, you're pulling my penis, mate. Come on. When's she coming back in? Oh, there's no round two. Brilliant. Makes me wish I hadn't spent all that time leveling her, leveling, leveling her up. Makes me wish I hadn't spent all that time leveling her up. And there we go, my little demons. That was another episode of Choose Your Own Adventure. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your choice for next week's episode. But before I go, I want to talk about one thing. We detailed today about villains who actually got one over on the heroes and ended up killing them. And death is an important thing that we'll all have to come to terms with in our lives at some time. No matter how great we are, we will inevitably fall and crumble into dust. But this is the thing. While it is incredibly sad and ultimately a very difficult thing to go through, and we will all go through it at some point, losing someone we love, do not forget 
The fact that that person who you care so much about had great meaning to you and their morals, their standings, their teachings, they carry forward. They don't die because they're inherently being put within you from their love, from their teaching, from their support. So don't go living in a shadow that you feel that they cast. Go on with those morals, with those teachings and live for yourself. Live with their memory powering you through the more difficult times. And remember, just because people go does not mean that you are alone because friends, family, professionals in the support industry, people care about you and want you to do well no matter what you're going through. All right? As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon, all right? All right.